In the fourth segment of the Breckenridge design project, we're going to be exploring the options for the roof. To begin with, we'll look at the roof settings that are used, the automatic build roof tool, manual roof tools, and then finally how to curve and look at different roof styles. In the previous video segments, we've done our floor planning, building the foundation, main floor, and second floor. At this point, to build the roof, underneath our build menu and in the roof section, I'm going to select the automatic build roofs option. My roof pitch to begin with is at a 6 and 12, overhang at 12 inches. My roof height is going to form an energy heel at 12 inches off the top of the plate. Options, I have a plumb cut for my eave and on the structure, fairly thick structure, for my roof framing, I've got it 21 inches using an eye joist. And then for some of my framing components following that 21 inches, I've got a sub fascia at 21 inches and finally my gable and eave fascia at 22 inches. Now with the settings defined, we're going to build a default hip roof using the automatic rebuild roofs and leave that setting on. Select OK and now the program will use that information and generate the roof. So the default roof is a 6 and 12 pitch roof mainly with hip overhangs. To change a roof element you can simply click on the wall and use the toggle to change that to a gable wall. Now in the area of this section over here we want to create a shed style roof and ultimately develop a shed style roof that I've labeled no curves. Then I will curve the center roof and then I'll show you what all of the roof planes will look like curved. To generate this shed style roof I'm going to change the pitch of the roof to 2 and 12. So let me minimize this. Go back into my build roof Control R, Command R on the keyboard and I'm going to change the pitch to 2 and 12. Select OK and let the program regenerate the roof. Now let's go ahead and split our screen so that we can see both the floor plan view and the 3D view in the same screen. And I'm going to select these three walls holding the shift key down on the keyboard and using that same toggle button toggle that to a gable style roof. That will change that area for the kitchen and you can see what, how it's generated the side wall that's come up higher. On the front side wall, let's go ahead and highlight that in our 3D view. Press tab to get to the wall. In this case, rather than toggling, toggling that to be a gable wall, I'm going to press Control E on the keyboard or Command E for Mac users. And I'm going to select this high shed gable wall option and select OK. That's going to now generate a shed wall at the end of that kitchen area. Now I'm going to work my way over to the right and let's come over into our floor plan. I'm actually going to go up onto the second floor in that area up here and select the outer walls. We already selected this front wall and changed that to a gable. So I'm going to select the back wall, actually all both of the back walls and I'm going to double click to open those walls up and I'm just going to mark it full gable wall. This is exactly the same operation as if I would have come down into the menu down here and toggled that on. Select OK and then in the 3D view you can see that it has generated a full gable wall on the front and on the side and actually since this interior wall is actually using an interior wall it's missing some siding and we'll just work our way around and make these corrections. Next step is to take the center wall in this area right here which is composed of actually several different wall types I'm going to make that a high shed wall. And I notice my crosshair cursor is on. Let me turn that off here real quickly under my preferences, edit and turn that off. I use that a lot but I try to suppress that during the videos. Select these different wall components and I've got a few of them because that's my railing just holding the shift key down. I've got all of those walls selected through there. Double click to open them and I'm going to mark that as a high shed gable wall. 
and you can see the effect of that change in the design over here and it's starting to get a little bit closer to what we want you can see that the roof has created a bend over here because of the uh, the ridge and the next thing that I want to do in creating the shed is you'll notice in my rendering that this area right in here is actually higher than the far right hand side of the structure and what I've done is I've opened up that center room that is above the living area that's open to below and I've raised that ceiling or that structure up five feet select the open below room that's on the second floor double click on it on the structure tab the ceiling currently the absolute value is at 240 inches that's additive from the floor below and I'm just going to add 60 inches to that select OK you'll see the effects of the roof immediately there's actually also another little room uh, in the previous video we created a bump out for the fireplace and this railing that comes around at a 45 degree angle actually created a small room in here. I'm going to make that same change on the structure plus 60 inches select OK and now that will bring that roof up to a shed roof and if I rotate around you can see the way that that's beginning to look now one of the issues that we have going on is first of all it's missing part of the siding when we raise that up that roof that was generated is cutting into that and then the interior wall is actually composed of sheetrock so let's go through the steps to make these corrections step number one in my floor plan view I am going to turn on the roof planes to be displayed so I'll scroll down find the roof planes turn that layer on now I'm going to zoom in in this area right in this actually area that you can see where the siding is off let's go ahead and use our zoom tool draw a marquee around that area and now I'm going to select the roof plane and I'm just going to pull it back to the outside of the siding and that's telling me that it's going to modify the roof plane and you want to turn off the automatic rebuild roofs select OK now any changes we make to the walls at this point the automatic roof tool will not regenerate it unless we explicitly go back in and rebuild it I've corrected that side where it was cutting off the siding by moving the roof plane next I need to fix this wall that is actually being generated in the attic and part of the reason that is a sheetrock level is because that is an, being generated from the wall type down below I'm going to go up into the attic, attic indicator, and notice that the wall type here is gray. The other wall type is blue. If I select this wall type, double click to open it, on the wall types you can see that it's being generated from that wall below that was based on an interior six railing style. And all I'm going to do is change that to the exterior siding brown that is composing the other walls. It's going to give me an indicator that I'm changing an attic wall and I'm going to go ahead and continue through that message. Now when I made that change, let's zoom in here a little bit more, that wall is actually deselected. That wall is actually pointing the siding to the inside of the structure. So I'm going to select the wall, use the tool down here called reverse layers it's on the bottom of your screen and select that and just reverse those layers and then do some alignment here in my plan view let me pan down to this wall intersection which is actually fairly complicated and in this area right here is in your 3d view where we have a wall connection that needs to be adjusted this wall intersection is somewhat complicated it's occurring in the attic those attic walls are generated from walls below and this intersection is a little bit interesting if you watched the earlier video on the garage floor plan when I select a wall there is a tool called edit wall layer intersections that is in your lower menu I'm going to select that tool and I'm going to make a few edits down here 
and just pull through some of these layers and when I do that it's going to give me a message about making changes to an attic wall I'll go ahead and select OK and I'm just going to go through and pull a couple of these layers through so that it cleans up that intersection and modifies it. I'd also then do the same thing to the other side. Returning back to the 3D view, all of our roof planes are now shed based at 2 and 12. At the beginning of the video we showed the shed style roof and with the exception of the upper level windows we're now at that point. The next roof style that we want to create let me skip one more, is where the center section of the roof is curved. Pretty easy to do actually. Minimize this image and simply, let's take our 3D view here, rotate it a little bit, click on the roof, double click to open it, and on the general panel of the roof is an option to curve the roof. Select that option and I'm going to change at the ridge to be zero degrees. Select OK and let the program generate that style of roof. That's ultimately the style that we're going to use for the house, but it's pretty easy to visualize what the other roof planes might look like. Simply select the roof plane, open it up, mark it as curved, and set that to be at zero at the ridge as well. And finally, you can see what it looks like on this roof plane, same deal, zero at the ridge, and generate the different roof styles. Now, let me back up off of that, and I'll hit undo twice. One of the things that I want to do with the roof is I want to extend the overhang. So let me go in, and I'm just going to shift select all of the roof plane. I actually see that selecting those roof planes is difficult in the 3D view. So back in the floor plan view, I'm on floor two and notice that I have a roof plane in this area and a roof plane in this area, but I have no roof plane in this area. Going down to the second floor, there is the roof plane and there is actually an option that I think is useful called display roof planes on floor above. So in certain cases where you have a maybe a, a story and a half or where roof planes are on different floors, you can then use that and display all of your roof planes on a single floor. Very handy for being able to edit those in an easy fashion. Now if I return back to the 3D view, it should be very easy to select all three roof planes since they're in the same floor. And I'm going to double click to open them. And one of the things that I want to do is change my roof overhang. And I notice since I have different styles of roofs that I can't change that overhang from 12 inches. Now one way to change that overhang might be to go into the floor plan view and zoom in, use the dimension tool, and if I toggle on my temporary dimensions, get a temporary dimension and change that right in this area right here to 2 feet. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rebuild my roof real quick and I'm going to change my overhang right in here to 24 inches and then I'll just regenerate that curved roof. Let's go ahead and take that main area roof and I'm going to go back in and mark it a curved roof. So just have to duplicate that work just a little bit. Back onto the first floor, we'll move that roof back up and then probably up on the attic floor I need to modify that wall intersection one more time and I'll just do that here real quick which looks okay and then we'll just pull that roof back to the outside of the siding and back into the 3D view and now we have the 24 inch overhang on all of the roof panels two shed roofs on either side and a curved roof in the center and the final rendering maximize that. Looks like this and in the next series of videos we'll look at our elevation views and adding those windows up into the attic floor that follow the slope of the roof.